Hi, this is your host Abdul Bharatiya and welcome to another episode of Mainframe Matters. And today we have two guests from IBM, Kriyoko's Jijo George, lead of the Tessia project at the Open Mainframe project and Sibele Kuds, manager of the team which is contributing to this project. Sibele, um, Jijo, it's great to have you both on the show. Thank you, Swapnil. It's nice to be here. Yeah, thank you. Nice to be here. Let's talk about some of the basics, which is, what is this project all about? Tessia is basically a tool that we are using. Uh, it's, it stands for Task, uh, exec task Execution uh, System and uh, uh, Software Installation uh, Assistant. It basically helps uh, a user, uh, you know, like, for, for people who want to install uh, operating system uh, on the Z, uh, Z Linux servers, it it basically makes it easier for them to install the, the you know various flavors of these operating systems on uh, uh, on uh, like an, a Z like Elpas, ZVM or Z or the KVM guests on uh, like the Z system. So, uh, like normally, people find it a bit challenging, but this basically this uh, tool is used to help ease that part. So, for people who are not that used to, you know, the the internal interfaces, uh, Tessia can help you in installing an applic uh, your op operating system on uh, on uh, these these Z servers. And on top of that, there is also the possibility of helping in task execution and that is currently handled by using an ansible uh, environment through which you can automate your tasks on these particular systems uh, th that you have installed for example we have uh, test teams from our uh, you know we are developing linux on c as operating system and so we have test teams testing that and those teams use Tessia and use the scheduler to run their test cases on the line, on the C system. So that is very helpful. What is the origin? What was the challenge or problem that you know the ecosystem community saw that you're like, hey, we need to create a project like that? As Sibylla mentioned, uh, that uh, the Tessia is a tool that is quite extensively used in our by our you know development teams and you know like teams who want to do uh, like uh, any forms of tests and implementations on the Z server. And it, Tessia basically helps in automating those tasks using, uh, you know, uh, uh, like a command line interface or and also a web interface. Uh, the idea is that uh, like, so, so teams who would like to uh, do some, uh, yeah, regression testing or, you know, daily scans or daily, uh, like, you know, continuous integration testings based on, you know, newer versions of distros which are made available. Uh, so those processes can be, uh, can be automated using Tessia. Apart from that, there are currently, you know, multiple projects which are, uh, so Linux development team is just one of the projects. So there are other projects who are using Tessia for automating their installations and then, you know, running uh, their uh, regression tests and performance tests on uh, Tessia, uh, on these Z servers. And uh, Tessia basically is like the tool which sort of helps them in implementing that. Now, if you look at Linux uh, distribution, there is not one distribution, uh, even on ZOS, a lot, sorry, Z systems, a lot of distributions are officially supported. Folks can also run whatever they want, it's Linux. Uh, but uh, you also have to manage the whole life cycle because Linux distribution, depending on what, if you go with the LTS release, it's good for two or three years, 10 years, but other six months, some, so do you, uh, this, this project, helps only with getting started with that distribution or to also manage the whole life cycle of that distribution we do provide uh, you know some level of uh, support in terms of the like the life cycle but it is more, like i said more towards our users so like depending on what our users wants we do provide them you know from canonical so all the as you mentioned all the versions of uh, ubuntu you know for testing purposes of course lts versions have a little more support and you know we do support them for the end of life in some cases also uh, for you know uh, for like uh, backward compatibility and testing purposes we do support the older installations as well and the same goes for you know red hat being uh, you know uh, like a core part of IBM, so we do uh, perform all of these uh, REL-based uh, uh, tests, and you know all the beta versions are tested by our development teams uh, using you know uh, the Tessia environment as the base. Uh, 
so it's uh, it's kind of a tool to you know help the, the, the these teams in you know simplifying their installation and uh, you know configuration for uh, uh, for uh, for like any new changes that might come with these distros are there any official distributions which are officially supported by this service or it really doesn't matter developers can add whichever they want developers can surely add but uh, you know their own uh, distros uh, but officially we are currently working working with the canonical so like basically ubuntu systems rail systems and uh, slash uh, so suze suze linux. linux yeah so Perfect. we we do support these uh, three uh, internally but of course as you mentioned you know uh, this being an open source project users are free to implement their own versions of uh, you know uh, inst- of uh, oss and distros into the system how old is the project when was it uh, like officially kind of you know came into existence officially the project was initiated around the time of 2017 2018 uh but like i said you know at that time it was more of an internal project so it was only around 2020 when we you know uh when we implemented that i mean we joined open main from project and open sourced the implementation for uh, like the community the community in general so uh, the uh, initially the idea was that yes you know it was more of a tool as i mentioned for uh, the internal uh, internal use cases and customers uh, like uh, uh, with from within the uh, within ibm to help them in their tasks uh, but over time uh, you know we thought that yes it is a like nice strategic tool so apart from you know like a, a couple of uh, you know in, in internal uh, modifications uh, like the whole uh, application has been made open source and available as a as a uh, as a as a uh, what i mean you can execute it as a dockerized container so yeah that helps as you said the the project has been inside in, uh, ibm for a while that it was released in open source so which means that there is already a decent uh, user base of this project so i want to understand talk a bit about the user base use cases we are see hey folks are actually leveraging this project to run linux on their systems currently we have around 30 35 projects within uh, the 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 ibm in, i mean in the in, internal version that we are helping you know, uh, our teams to uh, to install and set up their implementations on these uh, linux, on their like linux on uh, z linux servers uh and basically it uh it like as i mentioned it is it is used you know extensively by the linux development team the the test lab teams uh the various uh you know open shift teams uh like for uh testing you know crypto uh, systems so any and all uh you know like uh, any and all uh, code bases which might be you know helpful to automate Uh, for the installation and then run some tests on top of that using you know ansible um like currently like internally we do have you know other works as well that you know you can create your own container and implement your own uh, sort of state machines right so that you can run any application on top of uh, these so wherein tesia will help you to configure and set up the all the all the information about the z servers the l pass the zvms in the database and then those can be used uh, you know used to uh, run a particular kind of job so like like when i say state machines i mean like the yeah, ansible state machine as the simplest example that we do have it set up and uh, wherein users can use it to execute their uh, playbooks directly on top of these uh, z servers talk a bit about you know if you when you look back at some of the the major achievements that you're like hey you are when you look back at them you're like hey this is what we achieved and they, we are really satisfied with the the growth adoption and the progress of the project in terms of uh, the growth we have you know we, we have seen consistent growth uh, within like the team uh, to you know like of of adopters who you, like who heard about you know tesia from one or the other teams uh, as you, as i mentioned it started off as a development activity uh you know for the development team but then it got incorporated by other members by word of mouth within the within IBM that you know yeah that yeah tesia is a tool that can be used to automate some part of you know of your testing implementation or your code uh, or your code uh, code changes uh, so 
those kind of that's how you know like we, we have observed that you know, there has been a, like a steady growth in uh, tesia at the moment and uh, yeah i mean we hope to continue that growth you know uh, across the coming we- coming year uh well i i i mean like to be fair i would say that you know like the open source part is like yet to kick off and you know i think uh, open main uh, mainframe project is like a i think a key partner in that you know to help us reach to a broader audience because still until then you know it is kind of limited to you know users within ibm who know about these tools and you know who are uh, you know who are exploring it as a you know as a utility for uh, performing their or automating their tasks what kind of people should look at this project who would just say hey you should be using this project to help uh, your linux dis- deployment there could be any customers who who use uh, linux on on c so um i mean uh, the team changed a little bit half a year ago uh, so uh, we are now looking for new ideas we are talking to our customers and of course the the, the linux team is talking to their customers and there are some ideas coming up to us uh which means at the moment we have we need an installation for tesia to use it but there is a new idea we might uh, develop a, an ansible wrapper to uh, use tesia without installation so that we can install a linux image on c so that is something which uh, our um, linux product manager brought up to us so we are looking in that direction i think that's um important development for us and we are very open to our customers to to bring uh, or to develop tesia in 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 a direction where it can be used by a broader audience i also want to hear about you know some of the roadblocks some of the challenges that you still see are there for the project that you're like hey we still have to either solve these problems for the project overcome these challenges if i ask what will those be i mean i wouldn't say it's a roadblock it's more of you know like a journey into 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 you know open source that you have to cater not just to your uh, you know needs and like but you have to cater to the changing needs of uh, you know like the like for in, in our example uh, it would be like the very changes in the distros so for example when you know uh, like sub, uh, ubuntu changed their installers from you know like a, the traditional debian to subiquity that kind of required you know rework from our part as well right so any and all you know modifications or uh, changes that do happen uh, on the distro end you know on the installer end of all of these distros that has to be you know modified uh, or that has to be adjusted for our internal purposes as well or uh, and, and like yeah tesia basically provides you know you the the capability to you know modify your installations uh, based on you know a template file so you can adjust or uh, you know uh, like adjust your requirements or like depending on the team so you can do a lot of pre and post processing after the installation and the setup part uh, and that is basically how i see i see that you know the different teams can utilize it for their own particular needs but that also means that we have to uh adjust to the changes you know when and uh, like when and uh, how we observe uh, any uh, any modifications from the distro end now when you're saying you know we have to make these changes sometimes it looks like it's a lot of work talk, can you talk about what the community is uh, around this project how big it is you know or you know how diverse it is you know so just give us a view about uh, overview of the community around the tesia project the large part of its you know life cycle it has been an internal project so uh, it's only like as i mentioned in 2020 when it started you know developing i mean became a part of the open source uh, you know ecosystem uh, so currently it is you know highly uh, highly you know pushed by our teams activities Uh, as uh, sibella mentioned uh, you know like last year we had like uh, a lot of changes within the team so it's currently you know handled by uh, about you know four five people like from uh, like fr- uh, in in total uh, wherein uh, yeah three of us are located in bublingen in germany and uh, two of the team members are working from india they are like you know like fr- uh, like uh, developers 
who are like really uh, you know passionate about uh, like linux development activities and they are helping us in uh, you know developing it uh, for like as sibila mentioned based on the users uh, new requests and you know modifications so we are you know hope we are we hope to you know target that and you know proceed uh, in that that direction right now uh, last year if i'm not wrong i, I think during the open uh, mainframe summit there was a Linux working group was also announced. I also talked to the team there. Do you folks also work with those teams? Because, you know, there are a lot of, you know, di di different distributions which are part of that working group. Or right now you're just working within your own team here. I was made aware of uh, the Linux working group, you know, quite recently, I would say, like just a couple of months back. Uh, so because still uh, that time, as uh, Sibina mentioned, we were uh, in kind of, a, you know, restructuring phase. So currently we were working, you know, in, in uh in our implement for you know for our implementation in terms of uh, you know like creating a new roadmap for tessia and how we want to proceed with it uh, and yeah, uh, as you mentioned, you know, like uh, working with the like Linux working group would be, you know, like the uh, an, an optimal, uh, you know, way forward as well. And uh, yeah, I hope that, you know, we as in the, as in the Tessia team can contribute over there as well. We are for the restructuring, we are looking in different directions and we are looking uh, in, in different uh, projects where we can uh, contribute. So that is what we want to figure out, and we are we did not uh, complete the roadmap right now. So uh, we have to prioritize uh, what we do first because we have a lot of ideas, but we just can go one step after the other. So um, yeah, that's that's probably something we want to do to work with other teams together to use other open source tools um, to connect it somehow, or, and yeah. Um, make installation and configuration of these systems more effective. Yeah. Since you kind of briefly touched on that, if I ask you what are the things that, you know, not essentially the pipeline, but, you know, I use the word pipeline and roadmap, but not in the very traditional sense, but what are the things that you're working on? I can see, you know, that one would be to work with the Linux working group as well, but what are the things that you will be looking at working in 2023? Currently, as uh, uh, Sibylla mentioned as also, uh, that we are working on a, a kind of an updated version of the architecture as well. So we have like based on, you know, the, uh, the, the, previous uh, developers like you know like the architect uh, of tessia uh, so we are working with him uh, we are working on a modify like you know based on like the learnings from the existing arc implementation we are working on like a more uh, like a robust and like distributed uh, kind of a implementation for tessia so that we can have you know multiple instances uh of it, it uh working together in conjunction so that's one of those things i mean i just wanted to i don't want to like give delve too much into the details of that but yeah that's one thing for sure that is you know a core part of our development activities for 2023 and apart from that we are obviously working with the you know the distro teams uh you know for that uh, like as and when new versions of these uh like oss come in uh we want to make sure that you know that those are made available for our internal teams as soon as possible and there is as i said you know there is a huge uh, user base who are working on that you know just to bring in any uh, like new beta versions of uh, rel less uh, and ubuntu as and when it is released and they are there for testing uh, and yeah uh, like for deployment so uh, like th that's more of you know like how uh, our users are using it uh, but yes we uh, intend to support them uh, you know for this uh, like with their activities for this year of 2023 as well and uh, yeah i mean of course in open source uh, i think bug fixing is like you know a, a very normal part of it and uh, as and when you know like uh, new development activities come in we you know uh, we do uh, work on those as well Jijo, Sibel, thank you so much for taking time out today and talk about Testia project. And of course, as you said, there are a lot of things in the pipeline. So I would love to chat with you folks again whenever there is some new updates. But I really appreciate your time today. Thank you. Thanks, Vagmil. It was nice to be here with you guys. Yeah, it was nice to be here. Thank you.